Many scientists are not curious. Anomalous behavior and characteristics suggest that it might be alien technology of one kind or another. Fresh images from November 15th, captured by astrophotographer Tirasak Thaluang using a telescope in Thailand, reveal something that's been staring at us for months, but only now demands an explanation we can no longer avoid. The anti-tail is still there. Bright, prominent, impossibly persistent. And the physics that should explain it simply doesn't work. Let me show you why this matters more than any of the 11 anomalies that came before it. And if you believe discovery begins where people think its certainty ends, hit subscribe. That's where our universe gets interesting because this mystery is just beginning. When you see images of 3i Atlas, you notice two distinct features. There's the normal tail, the one pointing away from the sun like every comet you've ever seen in a textbook. Dust and gas pushed outward by solar radiation, but then there's the other one, the anti-tail, pointing toward the sun. Now, before you think this is some optical trick or a matter of perspective, understand that anti-tails aren't completely unknown. Some comets display them briefly under very specific geometric conditions. We've seen them before. We understand the basic mechanism. What we don't understand is this. Normal anti-tails last for days, maybe a week at most, visible only when Earth passes through the comet's orbital plane at exactly the right angle. They're fragile fleeting phenomena that appear and vanish as viewing geometry shifts. 3i Atlas has maintained its anti-tail for months through multiple observations from multiple locations, across changing solar distances and viewing angles that should have wiped it out a dozen times over. That's not how physics is supposed to work. And the explanations being offered to save the natural comet hypothesis are becoming more uncomfortable than the alternative. The first attempt to explain this comes from some of our most respected cometary scientists, researchers who've spent decades studying these objects. Their proposal, maybe 3i Atlas, is releasing giant dust particles, roughly 100 micrometers in radius. These aren't your typical comet dust grains. Normal cometary dust is about one micrometer across, perfectly sized to scatter sunlight efficiently because it matches the wavelength of visible light. It's why comet tails glow so brilliantly as they stream away from the sun. But particles 100 times larger behave differently. The physics changes. The ratio of surface area to mass drops dramatically, meaning radiation pressure from sunlight can't push them outward as effectively. They're too heavy, too massive for photons to shove around. So instead of being blown away from the sun, these giant particles would drift more slowly, potentially creating structures that point sunward before radiation pressure eventually wins out. That's the theory. And on paper, it almost works. Here's the problem hidden in the numbers. To produce the same brightness we're seeing in that anti-tail, you'd need to release 100 times more mass in these giant particles compared to normal dust. Because each particle has 100 times less surface area per unit mass, you need 100 times as many of them to scatter the same amount of light. Think about what that means for a moment. We're watching an object that would need to be venting material at rates that dwarf anything we've ever measured from interstellar visitors. The mass loss would be catastrophic, sustained, and visible across multiple wavelengths. We should be seeing a comet tearing itself apart, fragmenting under the stress of ejecting that much material. Instead, recent images from November 11th show a single, coherent nucleus, not a cloud of debris, not a shattered remnant, a solid, intact object. The math that explains the anti-tail requires mass loss the object doesn't appear to be experiencing. That's not a small discrepancy. That's a fundamental contradiction. The second, natural explanation suggests we're not looking at dust at all but fragments of ice that scatter sunlight before they have time to completely evaporate. But here's where the timeline becomes impossible. At the distances, 3i Atlas has been traveling from the sun. Ice doesn't last long. We're talking minutes to hours before sublimation turns solid ice into vapor. For an anti-tail to persist across the weeks and months we've been observing it, you'd need a continuous, relentless stream of fresh ice fragments being ejected in precisely the same direction at precisely the right rate, constantly replenishing the structure as older, fragments evaporate. That's not random outgassing. That's sustained, directional mass ejection maintained over timescales that natural sublimation can't support. And even if you could somehow engineer a natural process to do this, you're still left with the same mass loss problem.
The amount of ice required to maintain that brightness over that duration should be consuming the object at a visible rate. It isn't. There's another possibility, one that doesn't require invoking exotic dust physics or impossible ice dynamics, one that actually fits the observations more cleanly than either natural explanation. The anti-tail could be a thruster plume. I need to be extraordinarily precise with language here because this is where science and speculation intersect in ways that make both sides uncomfortable. I'm not claiming 3i Atlas is an alien spacecraft. Let me state that as clearly as possible. What I am saying is that the observed characteristics of this anti-tail match the expected behavior of directed high-velocity jets better than they match natural comet outgassing. Here's why. Technological thrusters produce tightly collimated beams of material moving at kilometers per second, not the few hundred meters per second you get from thermal sublimation. Those high speeds allow the exhaust to penetrate through the solar wind without being deflected, maintaining a stable, coherent structure across vast distances. A thruster plume wouldn't diffuse the way natural outgassing does. It wouldn't curve under radiation pressure. It wouldn't require impossible mass loss rates because the material is being actively accelerated, not passively released. And critically, a directed propulsion system would maintain orientation despite the object's rotation, which brings us right back to anomaly number 12, the jets that don't smear. Future spectroscopic observations will be able to distinguish between these scenarios. Natural outgassing produces characteristic velocities below a few hundred meters per second. Artificial propulsion would show velocities above several kilometers per second. That's a testable prediction. That's falsifiable. That's science. And in the coming weeks, as 3i Atlas approaches its closest point to Earth on December 19th, we'll have instruments pointed at it capable of measuring those velocities with precision. December 19th marks our closest approach, the window where Earth-based instruments will have their clearest, most detailed view of this object before it begins its journey back into interstellar space. The observations planned for this period are extensive. High-resolution spectroscopy to measure the exact velocity of material in those jets and that anti-tail. Multi-wavelength imaging to track how the features evolve as solar distance changes. Astrometric measurements to detect any deviation from a purely gravitational trajectory. If the velocities come back at a few hundred meters per second, the parts CAT, natural explanations stay in play, barely. If they exceed several kilometers per second, we'll need new models. Or new categories. Radio observatories are listening for coherent emissions, though none have been detected yet. Infrared telescopes are mapping thermal signatures that might reveal internal structure. Optical telescopes worldwide are coordinating continuous coverage to catch any sudden changes, any fragmentation events, any behavior that doesn't fit the pattern we've already documented. This is our chance. 34 days to gather data that might finally settle whether we're looking at the strangest natural object ever recorded or something that forces us to expand our definitions of what's possible in this galaxy. I've received hundreds of messages in recent weeks. Some from professional astronomers, more from engineers, software developers, educators, people who work with evidence and patterns for a living. And they all ask variations of the same question. Why does it feel like the scientific establishment is more interested in preserving the comfortable explanation than investigating the uncomfortable one? The answer, I think, comes down to risk asymmetry. If you investigate 3i Atlas as just another comet and it turns out to be something else, you've wasted an opportunity. If you investigate it as potentially technological and it turns out to be natural, you risk your reputation. In modern science, the incentive structures don't reward curiosity about edge cases. They reward safe, incremental progress within established paradigms. Being wrong about something extraordinary carries far more professional risk than being incurious about something potentially revolutionary. But that's not how discovery works. That's not how we learn the Earth orbits the Sun, or that continents drift, or that ulcers are caused by bacteria. Every major paradigm shift in science was fought by the establishment of its time, not because the evidence was weak, but because the implications were uncomfortable. 3i Atlas might be a comet. An extremely unusual, statistically improbable, physics-defying comet that just happens to exhibit a dozen different behaviors we've never seen before. Or, it might be our first clear detection of something non-biological, something technological, 
something that crossed the distance between stars and passed through our solar system while we happened to be watching. We don't get to choose which answer is true based on which one makes us comfortable. We only get to choose whether we investigate honestly or look away because the question is too strange. That sunward pointing plume isn't just a puzzle about dust dynamics or ice sublimation. It's a question about how we do science when the universe presents us with data that doesn't fit our models. Do we stretch our theories until they're unrecognizable, invoking special circumstances and unique conditions that have never been observed in any other object, just to avoid saying, we don't know what this is? Or do we follow the data wherever it leads, even when it points toward possibilities we never expected to confront? The anti-tail of 3i Atlas has been pointing at the sun for months, stable and bright, and utterly inconsistent with our understanding of how comets behave. It's not asking us to believe anything. It's asking us to measure, to test, to investigate. In 34 days, we'll have our answer, or at least the data that should lead to one. Whether we're brave enough to accept what it tells us is another question entirely. The universe is speaking. The only question is whether we're listening.